my signator chief envisioned two canoes going down the river. One canoe, Canada, Saskatchewan, the crown. The other canoe, Kausis. And we were supposed to flow down this river as long as the grass grows, sun shines, river flows. Every generation we were to exchange a child. And those children would be raised in that other canoe to know the ideology. And then they'd be given back as adults. So we'd always, every generation, evolve with each other. That that is what was supposed to happen. That didn't happen. So one of the goals of the museum over the next year of planning is to think about how to better incorporate the stories of these subsequent waves of, of Ukrainian settlers to Canada. Why we are wearing something that has a cultural impact of the culture of origin. I think partially it's the sentimental value. It relates us to the roots, it relates us to extended family and it brings back memories for us personally. Partially it is a statement, it's a cultural statement of identity, you declare who you are and uh, sometimes it's a statement of uh, political identity. With the unrest that is happening in Ukraine right now, there is lots of interest in the ethnical costume and uh, ethnical variations in the fashion and people wear it because they want to proclaim that they are patriots. I remember one day I was covering um, a story in Saskatoon about the African community. And uh, when I arrived on set, I just could feel the level of connection with the story in ways that I didn't in other scenarios. And I was like, my goodness, like what an incredible feeling to be a reporter who can report on these stories and have actually like a visceral connection with the subject. Um, to relate to them in a way. Absolutely. And it makes a huge difference in, in, in our job as storytellers, I find. course it's a lot of pressure and it's a lot of uh it's a heavy burden to carry to feel like I had to represent you know a million Muslims in Canada that come from different backgrounds different uh countries cultures languages socioeconomic backgrounds um but I felt like if I wasn't there you know um they wouldn't have this kind of access so I did the best that I could and I continue to try to do the best that I could, but I, I, I love to see more people who look like me <laughs> in these spaces so that I don't have to be the only one to, to, to shoulder that burden. So I would prefer a system where people are not discouraged from being curious about each other. I think the most genuine, the most sincere response to being faced with somebody who looks different from you or behaves different from you is to be curious about. Effectivement, quand j'ai été nommé, la nouvelle s'est répandue, mais incroyablement, les réactions venaient du monde entier. Oh! Une femme, une femme noire, euh, qui n'est pas née au Canada, arrivée. Réfugié avec ses parents. Wow! Et je décide que mes premières visites d'État seront en Afrique. Et c'est comme ça que j'entre sur le continent africain du nord jusqu'au sud. Et que, et pour moi, c'est aussi un retour aux sources en quelque sorte. 
c'est le chemin inverse, je vais vers la terre de toutes nos origines. Et quand je dis de toutes nos origines, de toutes les origines de l'humanité, mais en plus, quand vous pensez à l'histoire de mes ancêtres, c'est fabuleux, quoi. Et là, je retrouve tous mes gestes dans la façon dont les Africains parlent, dans la cadence des corps. Je ne parle pas nécessairement les langues, mais je connais les danses, ça me parle, les tambours me parlent tout. Et je suis militante sur le terrain. Je vais vers les femmes, je, vais, je sors des capitales, je vais vers les communautés les plus isolées, je m'intéresse aux, aux combats qui, se, qui, se, qui sont portés partout et je, et je prête oreille. Et, et bien sûr que ça apporte chaque fois un, un coup de projecteur. Et les populations sont enchantées de voir cette femme d'État du Canada, d'origine haïtienne, qui vient et qui s'intéresse et qui écoute et qui sert de relais. Music is, is one of the, the most borderless things that one can, can share culturally. Um, you don't even have to know the lyrics of, you know, the songs that you're hearing to appreciate them, right? I mean, how many opera fans actually speak all the languages that they sing opera in? How many K-pop fans actually speak Korean? And when I discovered music from other cultures, I thought, well, this is particularly exciting to me, particularly from a um, vocal performance standpoint. so haphazardly grow our voices like jasmine blossoming roots reattach when ripped from the soil so suddenly so try to maintain and grow which way your road will go nourish your soul but no you can't control which way the smoke billows outside of your life's window the, the ash around us sputters out of our throats and i mutter arabic with all the grace of a frightened goat still this nation family holds space for me to lighten my load they don't ask that i speak in public just that i eat a little Leave with a full stomach. I've spent adult years speaking like a child in, in a, a language, language I am struggling, struggling to learn. learn. My Arabic quietly cracks out of my vocal cords like the embers from a dying fire. To creep through this trial without notice is my sole desire. Yes, I speak the language of our occupiers, so I feel the glare full of judgment start to heat up my skin. Embarrassed to admit that, yes, I'm Arab and I struggle to speak Arabic, but you, you don't, don't know, know the, the battles, battles that, that lie within. within. These lies that line our stomach lining separate the outside from in, us from them. Heartless men have torn us apart again. It can be hard to comprehend, but please, together, we can start to mend. <laughs> 